Hello everyone, it's Jen. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and my craft table. Today's uh, tutorial is on how to put iron on the HGV, iron on vinyl onto a shirt. And this particular shirt is patriotic in nature. As a military mama, I am so proud to have a son who is in the military and to have other family members that are also in the military, including my own uh, father and grandparents who are veterans. So I am going to be showing you how to make a shirt with iron on HTV and a patriotic theme. This was great for uh, Memorial Day and 4th of July and all of our other patriotic holidays. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into Design Space and the craft table and get this project started. The project materials that we're going to need for today is um, I've got some, actually I have two different brands, but that is okay. I've got some red and some white, or red and blue HTV vinyl. This is the Cricut brand in Cornflower Blue. I just think that is an absolutely gorgeous color. And then I've got the Caesar Easy Weed in Brilliant or Bright Red. So I'm excited about using these. I'm gonna be putting them on a white t-shirt. And um, normally I would use the infusible ink, but I don't have the colors today. And actually I have plenty of shirts that I've used the um, iron on vinyl and they have really held up. So I'm excited about this project. I also have my um, Cricut Easy Press mat. I do have my Easy Press 2 waiting in the wings. I've got a measuring tape, a weeder, scissors. I do have um, craft mats for cutting out the vinyl, some parchment paper, and then a little piece of like a cardboard to go inside the shirt to protect the back of the shirt. Okay, let's hop into design space and I can show you the design that we're gonna make so that we can get this cut out and put on the shirt. Okay, so in design space, what I did is I just searched for a patriotic shirt and all of these designs came up and they, um, some of them are so cute, but what I just scrolled down until I found one that I really liked. And I really thought that the Sunflower American Flag t-shirt was really, really sweet and actually quite easy. Um, some of the others, definitely are doable, but of course with the supplies that I had on hand, um, they probably wouldn't have gone over very well. So I just chose one that was pretty simplistic. It really just needs two colors of vinyl. As you can see, I've got blue and red here on my screen. So the one thing that I am actually going to do is um, up here in my top right corner, I do need to change this to the Maker 3. And you'll see that that little red um, icon went away because this is definitely too big for the joy. And then I'm gonna take a look here at the sizing. Now this says 5.77 inches by six inches. So what I'm gonna do is go over here to templates and I'm going to scroll down until I see t-shirts. I was looking for, well, it's kind of a scoop neck. Um, really mine is more of a v-neck but I thought it would be nice to have a scoop neck and when you do the templates you'll get a little message that just says that they are for reference only and they will not save as part of your project you can come down here you can change let me get rid of that you can see that you can turn it off or on to see the template you can come up here to the top so this is a women's short sleeve shirt that I'm gonna use and I have a size large and this is the front and the back. Okay, so the next thing that um, you can do if you want to is you can always change the color of the shirt. My shirt is white, so I'm just gonna go ahead and leave that the way it is. Then I wanna come and bring in the sunflower. Now, obviously if I left it at that particular size it would definitely not go over well so i'm going to resize this and just keep centering it to the best of my ability until i feel like i like the size this is a 12 
by 12 ish um, 12 by 12 ish size that is absolutely going to be a little bit too big because I only have a 12 by 12 mat so I am going to resize it down and based on the number of shirts that I've been making lately what I have found is um, that anywhere from a 10 by 10 by 10, 9 by 10, 10 by 11 size has been quite, you know, just, you know, quite enough in size. So here, this is at 11.5 times 11.97. So it's almost 12, but not quite. And then what I'm going to do is I am actually going to just look here in the layers panel and you can see that there's two components to it. There's the blue part, all right, so just the blue portion, and then there's just the red portion. So this will actually need to be cut out on two separate mats, or I could use one mat twice. Okay, so I have both of those in there, and it looks like it's going to be a fairly, fairly easy uh, weed of material, which will be fine. And I'm going to go ahead and click on make just I want to see if it's going to require, it's what I thought. It was, it's gonna ask me for a 12 by 24 inch mat, which I do not have. So I'm gonna go ahead and click my back button, and then I'm going to resize this down just a little bit more. And I'm going to see, um, let's see. Let's see if it, yep, okay. So let me go back one more time. The new size is 11.2 by 11.64. If you are someone like me, um, I could even just do 11 by 11.5, um, and that would be okay too. I'm gonna lock the size ratio up here back to the make screen. We, you can see that I have the blue mat here, the red mat here, and this is the amount of material that I will need. You can see that um, when I cut this out, I'm going to be trimming this part off and save it for a future project. And other than that, I mean, it is gonna take a pretty big size piece of red. And as far as the blue, I will probably just put a piece that is about this big on it. The one thing you do need to make sure that you do for HTV or iron on vinyl is to hit mirror and that will need to happen for both of my mats because I need to mirror the design. Okay, so I'm just going to double check again. All right, so this looks really good. Then I'm going to be clicking continue. And once this connects to my maker, it's going to take just a moment. Then what I'm going to select is everyday iron on and I'm going to click on Remember Material Settings. And this way I don't have to select this for each mat that comes after the first mat. It does have a big um, red exclamation point that is going to remind me to mirror and place my uh, iron-on material with the shiny side down on the mat. And then you can also double check that this one says mirror on again. I usually end up checking that like three or four times. Uh, I've got my fine point blade loaded in. So the next thing is for me to go ahead, put both of these materials down on the mats and get them cut out and load and go according to the prompts in design space. Okay, now we have both of our designs cut out on our vinyl and I am going to just flip the mat over, pull my vinyl off, and I am going to, you can tell that my mats definitely need to be cleaned, but for right now, I'm just going to cover them back with their protective sheets. And, Something that I have started doing when I purchase mats is I will write on the back of the mat when I put it into uh, first use. So 
so I kind of know, kind of have an idea of like how long my mats are, are lasting. And then, oh, this one's backwards. And then I have, um, I want to do some really big ones, but I have these little vinyl decals that I put on the outside of my mats. And that way I know what side the carrier sheet goes back on top. And these, these just really last a really good while. Um, okay, so there's a little tip for you. And then the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to, and I may have to pull up design space to be able to weed these out. Um, let's see. Hold on, let me, let me pull up my design space on my other screen just so I can have a reference. I find that that's really, really helpful. So I will hop right back. Okay, so I just like to have design space open. That way I can kind of see what I'm working with. And then I've also cut off some of the excess um, vinyl so I can save that for another project and I'm just gonna hook a corner of the vinyl and I'm gonna start pulling off the portion of the vinyl that we don't that we're not wanting I think the most tedious part of this particular design will be there are some star elements on this blue portion here. But other than that, I think it's going to be a super easy design to weave out. And let me know in the comments, like, do you like to weed or do you not like to weed? There's a star here. I really enjoy the weeding process um, and I find that it's quite relaxing, but I know not everybody enjoys it. Let's see, it looks like we've got one up here. So I think what I'll do is I will just, I will get some music on for you and I'll go ahead and weed out. That way you can enjoy the process without all the tediousness. Okay, so everything is weeded out and I like to turn my images over and I do just double check against the design space to make sure that I've gotten all of the little pieces off that I need. And you can tell like seriously, this really wasn't that bad. I just wanted to make sure that I got all of the little stars, but it was very easy to weed. And then this is the Caesar, and it was really, really easy to read as well. And um, you saw it, it just came, all of the little pieces, just, they just came off so nicely. Okay, so let's get our shirt ready for the pressing. One of the things that I like to do is, you know, I'll have my, my easy press mat, and then I will take my shirt and I will pull in my easy press. Now this is going to be at 315 
And right now, all I'm going to do is just press out some of the um, wrinkles and the moisture, just getting this ready to accept the iron on transfer. Put that back. And then I will take the shirt and fold it in half because I want to crease it down the middle. You don't really have to on a on a v-neck but if you had a scoop neck or a man's shirt or something like that I like to crease it just slightly in the middle because I want to make sure that the bottom is going to line up with the top. Another thing that when I first started making shirts with Cricut is um, I printed out, this is just cardstock, and I printed out these neck um, aligners. And so I've got a crew neck. I've used this one a lot. That's by Jennifer Maker. Today I'm gonna be using the V-neck. They come with a scoop neck. And then they also have toddler and youth sizes. And I think it, newborn infants, which I have to do anyway because um, we're going to have a baby shower. And so what you do is you put the fold line right here and you line up all of this and it'll have a full, kind of like a little gig line right down the middle of your shirt so you can line everything up. I like to put a um, little cardboard just inside. Um, you don't have to do that, but I just kind of like doing that myself. I'm going to put this back and then let me grab my designs here. Okay, so something that was weird is when I moved my design over here, the, the carrier sheet kind of split right here. So I just put it back together and I put some heat heat resistant tape on top of there just to, you know, make sure that it stays together the way it's supposed to. And so this is um, going to be upside down for a moment because what I want to do is I really want to press this all at one time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off this extra piece of the transfer sheet around the blue and oh, okay. and so this will allow me to place this design together all at one time on my shirt. So I'm just going to very carefully go along the edge. And this carrier sheet is really sticky. And then, so it'll be here. Okay, so it'll look like this. And what, the, the reason why I'm doing this is because I don't want the carrier sheet of one part to cover up the vinyl of another. So like right here, this is what I mean. So I, when I am doing a multicolored design, a lot of times I will piece it together and press it all at once. But what I do before that happens is I go through and I just make sure that the carrier sheets of one and the other are not, um, they're not overlapping because you don't want and I've done this, you don't want to have the vinyl of one part to be stuck to the carrier sheet of another part. You basically want it to all go down on the t-shirt. Okay. I need to actually fix this little piece here too. And then I think I'm gonna turn this over. And I'm just going to marry these two pieces right here. Okay. Again, you know, you could totally 
press one color and then the other color separately. I just find it easier for myself if I press it all at one time. And so I've gotten really good at piecing things together. So this is what the design looks like. Looks like this. Okay. And another thing that I need to consider is the placement on the shirt. So here is that right there. And then this little fold line that I pressed earlier can be where this line that these two meet, those will go together. Okay. And then I'm just gonna move that out of the way and then I'm gonna just eyeball it, just gonna check it out and see that I like the placement. Okay, and then a lot of times what I'll do is I will, um, I will just check and see, you know, is it about, about the same distance from the side seam? Okay, so I think that that placement is really, really good. Right. That one's still good. This is very exciting. And then the only other thing that I would consider is whether or not I like it that close to the top. But actually, I think that's okay because, again, this is for myself. And I think that actually looks pretty good. All right, I'm gonna just put this down here. This little, this is just a piece of butcher paper. I'm just gonna put that over it. All right, and then make sure my shirt is squarely on that pressing pad. Okay, I think, there we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and press this. Okay, there's the top part. And I'm gonna come down in here in the bottom part, take care of the bottom half. Okay, here we go. Now, um, the one thing that I want to do, and this is very hot by the way, so I'm going to remove parchment paper and I'm just going to turn this over. And this time I'm gonna go ahead and take this cardboard out. And again, the cardboard is completely optional, I just, sometimes find it's very helpful. Okay, now this is the back and I'm literally just gonna press the back for about 15 seconds. I'm not gonna, you know, just gonna kind of let that count down. Okay, I think that is good. Now I'm gonna move my easy press mat out of the way. And I'm just gonna put this down on my glass mat and start letting the glass pull the heat. So, 315 for 30, 35, 30 to 35 seconds. And then it's a cool peel. But before I cool it all down, I do like to do a press on the back for about 15 seconds. Okay, I think that is nice and cool. And now for the moment of truth. 
and I'm just going to start pulling very gently. And so far I've had really good luck with the t-shirts that I have done. I've made some for myself, my daughter. I've made some for an esports club. That was fun. And some for a teacher's group at my school. This I think is probably one of the easiest ones I've done in a, in a while. The ones for school were very complex, but I learned a lot. Perfect. Oh, that looks so good. Y'all, I'm so happy with that. If I was giving this as a gift or, you know, something like that, then in, in addition to wrapping it really neatly, I would include one of these care instructions. And so um, these instructions are really important. Turning them inside out, machine washing. I tend to wash on cold stuff like this. Um, I like to hang it up, but sometimes I do throw it in the dryer, so just not on super high heat. I definitely don't bleach. And as far as ironing goes, I, I I don't recommend ironing, but I have, you know, the shirts get kind of wrinkled themselves. So I will turn this inside out and then I will do a very, like a cool iron and I'll go around the sides and then I will turn the shirt still inside out and I'll just make sure that I'm pressing on the side that is not du directly, um, touching the vinyl because otherwise you'll melt your vinyl we don't want that but oh that looks so good i am very excited to wear this tomorrow and i think it's gonna look great okay well that is all for this particular project for today i hope that you found this video was helpful and informative i really um, hope that you spend some quality time with your family hug your loved ones and please remember our military because a lot of them, they will not be home this weekend to enjoy all of the barbecues and parties that families have. Um, if you are interested in caring for our uh, service men and women, there are several groups that you can find on Facebook that will allow you to write letters and send care packages. If you are interested in anything like that, put a comment down in the, or uh, yeah, just put a comment down in the comments below and let me know. Um, or, and so I can get in touch with you and get you connected to those groups that serve the men and women who serve our country. Okay, well, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, share this video for anyone you think that would uh, find this informative. And until I see you in the next video tutorial, happy crafting. Thank you all so much for watching today. I'm so glad that you can join me at my craft table. If you're not already, I'd love to have you as a subscriber and don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you'll know when new videos arrive. Have a great day and as always, happy crafting.